Old Time Tales present Hans Brinker or the Silver Skates is the story of two children who lived in the small, courageous land of Holland. For many centuries, the people of Holland have lived with the sea as a constant threat, for much of the country is lower than sea level. To keep the water from overflowing and flooding, they erected great dikes or earthen bulwarks. Then, as now, the dikes sometimes gave way and farmlands and towns disappeared underwater. To make sure they were kept in good repair, teams of engineers and workmen were stationed along every dike. In addition, canals were constructed for land drainage. Later, when they were found suitable for transporting goods, a complex network evolved. Indeed, canals soon became more numerous than roads, and in the winter when the canals froze over, busy Hollanders took to ice skates to conduct business as usual. In Hans Brinker, Mary Mapes Dodge wrote about the family of one of the workmen who manned the dikes and how much a part of their lives were the canals. The story opens on one December morning. Two thinly clad children were kneeling upon the bank of a frozen canal in Holland. It was still quite early, and only a few people were out. But the children knew that they would have a busy day helping their mother, and this was their only chance to enjoy a bit of skating before she called them in. The boy, Hans, and his sister, Gretel, were fastening something on their feet to use as skates. They were not proper skates at all, but clumsy pieces of wood, narrowed and smoothed at the lower edge and pierced with holes through which were threaded strings of rawhide. For alas, Hans had made these queer-looking skates as the family was too poor to buy real skates for the children. Makeshift as they were, they gave them many a happy hour on the ice. Yet each of them secretly dreamed of owning a real pair of skates like the other children of their town. At the moment, Gretel was having difficulty tying her skates on, for she had hurt her foot a few days before when the strings had been pulled too tight. At last, Hans fastened Gretel's skates, and hand in hand, the children flew along the canal. First Gretel's skates, and then Hans' skates loosened and flew off, sending the children sprawling on the ice. A sturdy peasant woman, on her way to market with a heavy basket on her head, laughed at the two of them as she sped by on her steel skates. Patiently, Hans tied the skates back on, promising himself that one day he would earn enough money to buy beautiful skates for himself and his sister. Off they went again for a few minutes more. Although they would have liked to stay longer, they stopped skating when they heard their mother calling them to lunch. Because they were obedient children, Hans and Gretel quickly pulled off their crude skates and ran from the canal to their house. Their mother was standing in the doorway, dressed in a jacket and petticoat and a close-fitting cap, watching anxiously for the children. Mother's tired look showed that life was hard for the Brinkers. But it had not always been thus. For years before, the house in which the Brinkers lived in a little Dutch village on the Zuider Zee had been a joyous place. It was the same small, modest, immaculately clean house they now inhabited. The routine, too, was the same. And every day of the year, the house was scrubbed inside and out, as are most Dutch homes. But overnight, things had changed. Raff Brinker, the father, had been a worker on the dikes. He was a strong, robust man, full of cheer and kindness, who worked hard all his life and saved his money. He loved his pretty wife and their two little children very much. Everything seemed perfect for the Brinker family, until one night, during a storm, he had fallen from a scaffold and had lost his mind and his memory. The repair crews had been working feverishly in the darkness and sleet, trying to shore up a break in the dike. Raff Brinker was carried home unconscious. After the accident, he had become a strange, silent man and could no longer work. For 10 years, he sat before the fireplace in his home, saying nothing, recognizing no one. Poor Gretel, who had been only two when he was injured, could not remember him any other way. 
But Hans remembered that his father used to carry him frequently on his shoulder. And even after ten years, his happy singing still seemed to echo nearby when the household was fast asleep. Out of necessity, Dame Brinker earned a scanty living for her family by raising vegetables and by knitting. Once she had worked on the canal barges, but when Hans turned 15, he had insisted on doing such drudgery in her place. Besides, her husband was growing steadily more helpless and harder to control. In his state, he was inclined to behave strangely, as when he seized Gretel's new wooden shoes and flung them into the fire. In spite of all this, though, Dame Brinker never lost hope or faith that someday her husband would be himself again. If only she could discover the hiding place of some money that they had had. With that money, they would be able to live comfortably and also afford good doctors for her husband. She often told the children about the mysterious disappearance of a thousand guilders she had saved. The money had disappeared just after the terrible accident, and Dame Brinker believed that Raff knew where it was. Many times, she had asked her husband about this money, but he looked at her without understanding. And so the long, hard years had passed. At times, there seemed to be no hope left at all, but still they stayed together and tried to make each other happy. To help the family, the children worked hard in the garden. Nearly all the outdoor work, as well as the household chores, were done by Hans and his sister. Sometimes they went out day after day to gather peat, which they stowed in square, brick-like pieces for fuel. At other times, Hans earned a few cents riding the towing horses on the canals, while Gretel earned money tending geese for neighboring farmers. Hans was good at wood carving, and Gretel could sing and sew better than most other girls of 12. Because they were poor and wore threadbare clothes, Hans and Gretel played together. From a distance, though, they would watch other boys and girls. This was the case one morning when a group of girls and boys came skating down the canal. Among them was Hilda van Gleck, dressed in velvet and rich furs. Next to her was Annie Beaumont, dressed in scarlet, and Richie Korbs, whose father was a prominent citizen of Amsterdam. With them skated Carl Schummel, Peter and Ludwig van Holp, and Jacob Poot. Altogether, there were nearly 30 boys and girls in the group. One and all were full of excitement. They were discussing a skating match in which the prize was a pair of silver skates engraved with an arrow and decorated with silver bells, black straps, and silver buckles. The match was to take place on December 20th, to celebrate the birthday of the burgomaster's wife. Just then, Hilda, the burgomaster's daughter, saw Hans and Gretel and told them to enter the race because she knew that both brother and sister were very good skaters. The other children laughed and scoffed at the Brinker's strange wooden skates and poor clothes, but Hilda wanted to be their friend. So when Hans told her that he and Gretel would love to enter the skating match, but they had no real skates to use, and the wooden ones he had made would never stay on their feet long enough to last out the race, Hilda looked in her purse. She had spent most of her monthly allowance already, and there was only enough left to buy one pair of skates. Which of you is the better skater, she asked. Hans replied, Gretel, and Gretel insisted it was Hans. Whichever it is, decide between you and please use this money to buy a pair of good skates for the match. With that, she gave Hans some money. Hans tried to return the money without success. Realizing that he was a proud boy who did not want to take charity, Hilda admired a little wooden necklace on Gretel's neck. Carve me a chain then, like your sister is wearing, she said, and quickly went on her way. With this money, Hans bought a pair of skates for Gretel. He had argued with his sister a long time, for he wanted to buy her a warm jacket. But Gretel had started to cry, because she wanted at least one of them to have good skates for the race. Since Hans could not bear to see his sister crying, he gave in and bought her the skates. Later, having earned some money, Hans bought a pair of skates for himself in Amsterdam. 
Meanwhile, things were growing worse in the Brinker household. Rath Brinker had almost killed his poor wife, and it was clear that his condition was deteriorating. Hans decided to bring a good doctor to examine his father, even if he had to beg someone. He was successful, for one day, while in Amsterdam, Hans persuaded Dr. Beckman to try to cure his father. Several days later, the great doctor, along with his assistant, appeared at the Brinker home and examined Raff Brinker carefully. The doctor explained to the frightened mother and children that he would have to operate on the sick man and that even then there was no guarantee that he would recover and not die. After praying for guidance, Dame Brinker fearfully gave her consent. <coughs> Dr. Beckman operated on Raff Brinker and to the joy of the family, cured him. For several days he was very confused. He could not understand that in the ten years since his accident, his wife had grown older and gray, and his children were almost grown up. At last he accepted the truth. Everyone was thrilled to have the man of the family back with them again, sound in mind as well as body. When he was feeling quite strong, Dame Brinker got up her courage to ask him if he remembered where he had hidden the missing thousand guilders. At first, the poor man was horrified, for he had thought that his wife and children had been able to live comfortably on that money while he was ill. For a while, he was not able to remember. Then suddenly, <coughs> Raff recalled the spot where he had buried the guilders before he lost his memory. The children took their spades and ran out into the garden. And sure enough, after one or two false starts, they found the stocking stuffed with money. They ran back to the house, waving the heavy treasure triumphantly. Now nothing stood in the way of Raff's full and speedy recovery. And for the first time in ten years, his wife went to bed with a light heart. His health improved so rapidly that... On the day of the skating match, Raff and his wife went to watch the race. It was a fine, clear day, bright with sunshine, crisp and cold. The north side of the frozen canal was jammed with eager spectators, for news of the match had traveled far and wide. High over the ice, on a canopied platform, sat the burgomaster and his wife, whose birthday celebration it was. While down below, the skaters stood in a line, waiting for the bugle call to start the race. Forty boys and girls, dressed in bright, colorful costumes, waited anxiously for the moment. Boys on one side, girls on the other, According to the rules, the boys and girls were to race in turn until one girl and one boy have beaten twice. They would start in a line, skate to the flagstaff, turn, and then come back to the starting point, thus making a mile at each run. A flag was waved from the judges' stand. Madame Van Gleck stood up, leaned forward, and dropped her white handkerchief. At this signal, the bugle sounded. Off raced the skaters. Among the girls, Gretel won the first mile, Hilda the second. Many dropped out along the way. Meanwhile, Hans won the first mile for the boys. But his new friend, Peter, won the second. As they lined up for the third race, Hans noticed that Peter's skate strap was broken. Without a second's hesitation, Hans gave his own strap to him and thus lost his chance to win. Now everyone gathered around to watch the third and deciding girls' race. Like a bird, Gretel skimmed over the ice ahead of all the skaters. She soon passed even Hilda. The crowd began to roar with excitement. As she sped toward the finish line, the onlookers shouted, Gretel has won the race. She could not quite believe what was happening. And then, hands rushed over to Gretel as the girls crowded around her. In the next minute, the boys' third race began. And thanks to Hans' sacrifice, Peter won easily. Afterwards, the boys and girls moved forward to the pavilion, skating slowly in time to the band music. There, Gretel received the silver skates and a large bouquet of flowers. She was called Queen of the Skaters. With a bright smile, Gretel curtsied to Madame Van Gleck. A moment later, hugging the skates and the flowers to her bosom, Gretel rushed off to find her parents. Together, they skated home to have a family celebration. Back in the cottage, the peat fire lit up the silver skates and flowers on the table. Mother had polished every piece of furniture in the house. 
Delicious smells filled the air, especially from the roast cooking slowly in the oven. And the table was covered with a sparkling white cloth and new dishes. Dame Brinker's face shone and twinkled in the changing firelight. It had been a long time since such happiness and laughter had brightened her little home. As for father, Raff Brinker was dancing with joy. As he whirled about two or three times, he caught his wife in his arms, fairly lifting her from the floor in his delight. Hans and Gretel, arms entwined, were leaning against the fireplace, laughing at the scene. After that, good luck seemed to have settled permanently at the home of the Brinkers. Hans went to school. Raff went back to work at his old job. Time passed happily for the little family. Years later, thanks to Dr. Beckman's help, Hans became a famous doctor in Amsterdam, where he was often seen skating with his own boys and girls on one of the city's frozen canals. And when she grew up, Gretel married happily. Her husband considered her the sweetest wife in all of Amsterdam. And to be near their children and grandchildren, Raff Brinker and his wife moved into the city. But none of them forgot the old cottage where long ago they shared much unhappiness and much joy. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Cheers.